What is up everyone? Thank you for coming back in 2018. In case you didn't know, you guys right now are my first 100 subscribers. So thank you. I'm really happy and grateful for all of you. And I'm really happy to still be doing this channel into 2018. A lot more videos planned for this year. And just to say thank you to all of you guys, I wanna give you guys just some like free lion bold stuff. I have a sign up sheet and I'm gonna send you some stickers or some window decals that I have. Fill in your name and address and I'll, I'll mail it to you. So just thank you uh, just for being a huge support. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is BAM! New studio, new desk, new fun. So if you haven't seen my studio walkthrough video that I released last month, last year, wow, it's gonna be weird saying that. But if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's just an update of the latest that I'm able to do here in the studio if you're ever interested in recording with Lionbolt with me. And then speaking of me, guys, let's become better friends. I'm gonna throw up my social media handles so you can just connect with me on another level in addition to Lionbold, because some of you I know are already following Lion Bold on Instagram and Facebook. So here it is, let's link up, let's become buddies, and of course, let's talk music. Okay, so with this channel, I try to make educational music videos, not like cinematic music videos, but videos about music that are educational for you guys. And I'm gonna continue to do that this year. And today's topic is going to be about performing rights organizations. There are many types of musical royalties that you can earn with music. There are a lot of them. If you don't know them all, you should pick up a book on music publishing. And I'll link a really good one that I like in the description below. Performing rights organizations only focus on one type. So this is not gonna be a one-stop shop solution to collecting all your royalties. This is just gonna help you out with one of them. And performing rights organizations, from now I'm gonna say PROs, help with collecting your performance royalties. Okay, so to recap, many kinds of royalties, PROs help with performance royalties. A performance royalty can be a few things. It could be you playing your music, literally you playing your music live in a venue. That could be one way to earn a performance royalty. Another way is if your music is played over the intercom at a Starbucks or a store or something else. But the biggest way that they determine this royalty is through radio play. Now, I'm not talking about internet radio. I'm talking about what is called terrestrial radio. These are your AM, FM stations. These are the big radio stations all over the country. That is what the PROs look at to determine your royalty amount. Each PRO has their various methods of calculating how much of a percent your song was played in comparison to all radio play, and then they determine that royalty for you, which they pay out with a fat check. But this is one really important thing to know about PROs is that whatever royalty that you earn, they pay it out to the publisher and to the songwriter. So in addition to this royalty that we've been talking about this whole time, there's two sub royalties within that. There's the publisher's royalty and the songwriting royalty. PROs automatically distribute each royalty to each party. So you don't have to worry about that. But what you do need to worry about is if you are a DIY artist and you consider yourself self-published, you may not be collecting that publishing part of the royalty unless if you've created a publishing entity for your own music. So I'll say that one more time. You might be collecting the songwriting, but if you haven't created a publishing entity for yourself, then you are missing out on the publishing royalties that the PROs pay out to you automatically at the same time for the same amount of radio play. Okay, so now here's the fun part. Which PRO is the best one? You might already know that there are two main performing rights organizations, ASCAP and BMI, which are both nonprofit and regulated organizations. And then there's a third organization called CSAC, which is a for-profit PRO and is not regulated but you can't just sign up for that one. CSAC is invite only. So I'm not even gonna talk about CSAC because a lot of us won't even be considered to be a part of that PRO. So going back to ASCAP or BMI, which one is the best? 
Well, it's really up to you, so I'm just gonna leave this nugget of truth with you, and then you can decide for yourself. ASCAP, which stands for the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, was created by those members. They were created by a bunch of composers who decided we want to collect our royalties. They formed this group and they were hugely successful in lobbying against the radio stations and really bugged them so much that the radio stations protested by only playing public domain music. But you can only go so long playing public domain music before your listener base drops and you can't sell advertisements on the radio anymore. So in response to that, radio stations formed the organization called BMI, which stands for Broadcast Music Incorporated. Moving forward to today, both ASCAP and BMI are both nonprofit organizations, and they both collect royalties and pay them out to publishers and artists. Also, they are both governed over by the courts, so they cannot manipulate or change the royalty amount that they pay out, AKA they are regulated. So which PRO are you registered with, or which one are you gonna choose if you haven't already signed up? I'd love to know, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and you can put them down in the comments section below. If you like these videos and you appreciate learning about music and the business, please subscribe and like, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video.